God bless you. We are so excited to have you with us here today on Kingdom Concepts. Have Dr. Rogers again with me in the studio. And man, we've just been talking about the love of God. I mean, this is such a huge subject and one of my favorite subjects uh, because I never knew how much God loved me. I mean, it, it's hard for you to sometimes understand how, how someone can love you when you're in a situation where, like myself, I didn't even love myself, you know, and to be able to come to a place where someone tells you, Jesus loves you. doesn't matter what you've done. His love is greater than your mistakes. Um, man, that took me back, Doc. I, I, I didn't understand the, the, the gift of Jesus Christ and, um, and the love that came through that gift. You know, what, what's your story? How did, how, how did you come to a place where that the revelation of that love and how to receive that love became real to you? I'll tell you, it was, it was a struggle. It really was because, you know, I, I had created a lot of scar tissue on my own life. And so I chased after a lot of things, you know, trying to get affirmed in what I thought love was, which n never works in the world. Yeah. And so the thing of it is, is that when I came to God, even though Jesus Christ touched my heart and it changed me, I still had to change my thinking about how to connect to that love because I had to fight that feeling of unworthiness, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, I, you know, the enemy does that to you. It just tries to, you know, make you feel like you don't qualify, you don't live up, you don't live up to the expectations that God has for you. But well, the Bible says that while you were in sin, he loved you. So right. It's not, it's not like a pre-qualifier to get to him. It's just come to him just like you are and then learn how to receive what he has for you because he's got tons of gifts. Yeah. You know? And a purpose. And a purpose. <clears throat> man. I, I know for me it was like getting that revelation that God loves me. Um you know, again, like you said, when you got layers of all these reasons why you can't be loved. And like you said, Satan's so good at making you feel worthless. I, I think there's so many people that they don't understand their worth. I didn't understand my worth. It wasn't until I was exposed to the word of God, faith that comes from the word of God, that I understood that God's love for me was so intense and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the degree of his love that he was willing to you know, to offer his son, right. his only son, right. you know, for me to, 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 to take the, the price of everything I'd done wrong to pay that price so that I wouldn't have to. Right. I mean, that just, it's even now, you know, 25 plus years later, I still sometimes have a hard time just wrapping my mind completely around how much God can love us. And, I, and what he had to show me was that he He's always seen the best in me, and that's why he's always been able to handle the worst of me. Well, I'll never forget that this happened to me. I was, I was living in Morro Bay at the time. It was right after a big traumatic incident happened in my life, pastoring at the coast. And I was driving down Highway 1 going towards San Luis, and I just I felt so alone. You know, I mean, here I was, I was pastoring, and I felt so alone. And I said something out loud. I just said, God, I'm not sure I can make it. Mm. And God said, I love you. I'm here. Mm. And when he said that, I had a hard time receiving that. I, I, matter of fact, I wanted to say this. You do? Mm. Well, isn't it interesting after everything that God has done to prove his love for us, still you have to get in the position to be able to receive it. It's there, but you got to change the way you think about God is perfect in the area of love. You cannot measure God's love compared to humanity. Why is that? It's because people will disappoint you. People will misuse you. You, you, you. you know, maybe we've misused people. Maybe, you know, we started out with the right intentions to do something and then failed at it, you know. Yeah. And so the tendency is to think God's like that. He's like us. Yeah, he's like us. And that's not true. Mm. We're supposed to measure up to be like him. 
but you can't do it until you receive his love. We get it through salvation, but we get the part of about having eternal life through Jesus Christ. But to be able to walk in the security of his love is something that you got to you got to get your mind renewed. Yeah. I mean, you got to change the way you think about stuff. The only way that's going to happen is that you have to learn more about God than you know about life. Cuz the real life is in him. Yeah. This life that we live, that's that's a facade, man. Yeah. Because the Bible says it's in him that we live. Yeah, and move and have our being. Yeah, it's like you find who you are when you're right. in him. I always say you look a lot better when you're in Christ than when you're out of Christ. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, and, and... I saw some of your pictures. And I saw oh, some gosh, of man. <laughs> this, me, Jesus. This you know? last pastor appreciation video uh, <laughs> that they did, or not, uh, our 30-year anniversary, meaning Leanna. I don't, man, they had to go into some low places to find those pictures and video. I was like, God, you know, you've taken me a long way. And, uh, but you know, it, it's like what she said. You have to come to a place to where you realize that you are made in his image. But man, we, through Jesus Christ, we can, we can really start laying hold of manifesting that image, not just in appearance, but in, in substance, because you know, the Bible doesn't say that God has love. The Bible says that God is, is love. love. Yeah. And we're a people that have love. But I remember God had to show me. This helped me out understanding the love that he has, that he is love, um, that it, it, it's his essence. It's I mean, that's why Jesus, every time he moved on this earth, he was always moved with compassion. I was thinking about the mercy seat. I mean, that's love. And I remember God taking me to a place where he had to show me how how big and how vast his love was and um and and taught me how to receive it you know cuz you you receive you access everything through faith and and I received it you know through uh, that understanding of who Jesus Christ is and why he was sent and the more I study that word, the more I see his love. His, this is a love letter. Yeah, it is. Th this whole book is about God's love for us. And in, and in God showing me that he is love, God showed me how to love. And he showed me, son, your love can be like the love that I have. You know, as we continue to, to get more of him in us, we truly can give more of that love. Can we, Don? Yeah. Well, you know, John 15, you know, Jesus is saying this. He says, you know, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Yeah. And, you know, that's not rules and regulations. It's the attitude. Because remember, Jesus said this. He said the law is summed up in two scriptures. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with everything you got. Yeah. And you love your neighbor as yourself. Well, the qualifier on that second one is that you got to learn how to love yourself. And that's not a pride issue. That's that's an issue that you've got to appreciate the stuff that God has already done in you and the and the gift of God that you are. <clears throat> because all of us have a calling, all of us have a gift in us yeah. that God gave us. Yeah. And so, but to love other people, I've got to I got to be able to appreciate myself. <laughs> it, it's it's true. And and Jesus even anted up on that. Huh? He said, "You got to." you know, love others the way that I loved you. Right. Because we don't know how to love ourselves. And we're supposed to be known by our love. <laughs> right? It's our identification. So, you know, I, you know, and I've said this many times, and this is not a slam against anybody, but I always ask, you know, churches that I minister in, you know, and I say, if we're to be known by our love, are we? Yeah. Are we really known by our love? It's a legitimate question. Because we question. might be known by our spiritual intellect we might be known by you know the words that come out of our mouth because we take authority over this we bind this we lose that or whatever but are we really known about love yeah can we love somebody enough to actually listen to them right you know because we we're, we're so full of conversation yeah that we want to tell everybody stuff but what what if that person just needs to be able to tell us what's in their heart and we're already fixing their deal before it ever comes out of their mouth. That's true. You know, it's, I think it's one of those things where, you know, you have to, you really have to step deep into that relationship you have with God. You do. Because his love, what the Bible says it has no debt, no width, no height. It's no. immeasurable. 
And I remember when God was teaching me about receiving his love, because if we can receive it, then we can give it. Yeah. We have something to offer. And I remember him telling me one day I was, I, you know, correcting my children. I got three kids and, and I remember, you know, they would do something wrong and I'd be like, okay, you know what? Um, you're on restriction. You know, you can't go anywhere for, you know, for three days or something. And you know what? My kids would start behaving and, you know, and they'd, they'd, they'd start doing anything I wanted without, you know, huckabucking or anything. And, you know, and after like a day or two of that, you know, you're just like, you know, dad, can I go stay night at, you know, my cousin's house? Yeah, all right. You know, it'll be all right. And I remember one time I did that and God told me, I'm not like you. And I was like, okay, here comes a lesson. And he goes, he goes, I don't love you like that. He said, because I love you, he said, I won't change my word. He says, you think that, you know, because, you know, he goes, you think you're teaching your children something. He goes, but you're not teaching them to be like me. He says, because I love you, I honor my word. He says, and that's the way you need to be with your kids. You're telling them this is, this is what. Yeah, this is the law. Yeah. But, but I'm going to change because my compassion. Yeah. And it's like, and, and, and when he told me that, I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't realize that I was, that I was doing that. And God, what he had to show me was this, because God is love. And to get that, once we get that revelation, you know, then, you know, you can learn to love others. I mean, what is it? First uh, John 4, 7 and 8, you know, beloved, let us love one another. Yeah. And he had to show me, son, my love is without limit. And my judgment, he says, my love is still in my judgment. You know, he goes, I, I, when I do something, it's always done by love. It is. And, and, and so when I got that revelation, it helped me to be a better parent. And then it, it, what it did was it showed me that I had more work to do <laughs> on my love walk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I thank God for those moments where he teaches you about receiving his love. Again, because we can't do anything good in ourselves. Anything good that has come out of my life has come out of that relationship that I have with him. I mean, what do you think are some of the greatest things that people can do to receive the love that God offers through his son, Jesus Christ? You know, we read this scripture um, last time we were together. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you guys can turn to this. John chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means anybody, that believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So how do we receive that? Well, you got, you got to look at the Bible. You have to be able to look at the life of Paul. That is, his all of his ministry was to the church. Yeah. So all of his writings are called the epistles and the, to the church. That you've got to see how Paul learned the process of being able to change his identity by accepting God in his own life. Mm. Because he even makes the scripture out of, what is it, Galatians 2 and 20. Oh, yeah. And it says... That, you know, paraphrasing it, he was crucified with him. Yeah. And that's something. So, see, his identity was what was the purpose of the crucifixion? What was the purpose that Jesus said for the joy that is set before him that he endured the cross? Mm. Because I was there and I went through those things. And so, even when he died and he was in the grave, we were all there, man. Isn't that something? And so, to understand what Jesus did, to understand the plan of God, that's what helps you to understand the love of God. Yeah. So you got to study. You have to hang out with God. I mean, you know, relationships are built upon communication. That's right. So if you don't, if you don't have communication with people or with God, you can say all day long that you love them, but the reality of it is, is do you hear what they say? Do yeah. you know what they feel? You know, because God is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That means that God is interested in the little idiosyncrasies of our life that concern us, that, you know, that we're thinking about. How do I do this? God's interested in all that kind of stuff. 
He does. He cares. He cares about everything. Everything. You know, I, I was I was moved years ago by a, a story that my wife had shared. It was something that she experienced when she was in Africa. We've been doing ministry in Africa since 2000. You've been doing it longer than that. And, you know, taking care of widows and orphans. And she was at this, that you know, we, we buy them uh, things that they normally don't get. You know, to where, you know, like meat, you know, and good rice and vegetables. And we'd buy them, you know, uh, Vaseline, you know, that's, you know, they for their, you know, oil, you know, for their hands. You know, they use it like lotion over there, the, the Vaseline. But one time my wife, you know, when she bought some things, I'm going to go distribute it to these widows at their homes and their huts. My wife felt like, man, I need to get some matches. We'd never given matches before, but she's like, you know, just buy some matches. So they bought some matches. And so they're at this one widow's house and as they're giving the lady the food and everything like that and you know and i mean some of them don't get to eat meat for over a year you know and so we give them all these things and the lady was very grateful but when they handed her the matches man this woman just began to weep and weep and weep and when she was able to compose herself the interpreter was asking her you know what was going on? You know, Eliana was wanting to know what, what happened. And the lady said that that she had no way to make fire and she'd prayed and she's like, God, you know, Lord, if you're there, hmm. Lord, you know, I need this. Because you can't cook with anything without it. Can't, you know, and stay warm or nothing. Because women over there, it's like all they do is take care of the fields and make babies in certain parts of the country where we go, that's the majority. And so they're like children when their husbands die. You know, they're, they're, the husband's family can come and take everything they own. Right. And so they're just like children. And so we, we go there to help them, teach them life skills and stuff and help take care of some of those needs. And we've hired people to watch over, you know, widows. We've done a lot of different things. But that woman, God showed her how much he loved her with a, with a few sticks of matches. It's like God knows exactly where we're at. He knows exactly what we need. It's like you said, he cares about the, the, the little things. You know, and it's like if if God's love is that deep and that vast to where he pays attention to the the simple things that make us happy. And how much more when, like you said, we get revelation right. of, of how much love really is available to right. us. What do you think is um, one of the greatest challenges that people have to receiving God's love? What makes it so challenging sometimes? I mean, this is the holiday season. You know, Christmas is fastly approaching and, um, you know, and you have a lot of things going on. But yet during this time of the year is when suicide rates go up so much during the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, stuff like that. What is the greatest challenge that people have to receiving God's love? What's the thing that's keeping them from enjoying this great love that God offers? Not entering into the relationship that God has for you. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Because the thing of it is, is that you can mentally ascend to all this stuff, but it's not changing you. And the change comes in your spirit. Because you, you've you got to learn how to focus in on God. you got to learn something about God that is a personal thing, not what somebody else says. Mm-hmm. But, you know, because the Bible says in, in John, the eighth chapter, it says, if you continue in my word. Yeah, there you go. Then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's not set free. It's make free. Yeah, create freedom. That's a process. Yeah. <laughs> and true. so so the idea of it is, is that the more you know, the more you continue in his word personally, the more that you understand the attributes and put you in a position to be able to receive more of the understanding of God's love. Listen, God's love is so fantastic. It's so awesome. It's hard for a human being to wrap their head around that kind of love. Because most human beings have conditional love. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. So we right. think God is like that. And he's not. And, and God, I, it's God. Can you imagine this? Man, l- listen, that you and I, as men, as human beings, we don't always say the right thing. We don't always no. do the right thing. No, we don't. But God's love doesn't change. Yeah. So we think that if we're doing good, that he loves us more. If we're doing bad, he loves us less. That's not even true. That, that's performance-based it's love. It's performance-based love. And God's not into that. Well, God said, while we were yet sinners... 
Christ died right. for us. I mean, you can't do anything to make him love you more or less, but you can do something yeah. to know that love. And like you said, it's through accepting his son, Jesus Christ, not, not because of religion, but because of who he is. I was just thinking about this, man. You know, think about this. Jesus is on the cross, and he has got a couple of thieves that are being hung with him on either side of him. Yeah. The love of God. The one guy believes. That's all he did. He yeah. believed. And Jesus said, this day will you be with me in paradise. What did the guy do? Yeah. Nothing he believed. Yeah. And so the thing of it is, is that we put all these conditions about measuring up. And I've got to be so careful that even when you minister the word of God, that you're not putting all rules and regulations. Yeah. That's performance based. Yeah. It's, it's relationship based. I'm not saying that we don't follow the mandate of God. Yeah, we have a but part. But we can't put so much pressure on that thing that we never feel like we're ever achieving anything that God has for us. Yeah, or you'll never have initiative because you'll always think that you're not good enough. I, I know for like me, when I got saved, you know, I, I was so used to just, you know, thinking that Christians were all about, you know, uh, Jesus and going to hell, That's you true. know? And, and I remember, you know, I always believed in God. I just wasn't living for him. And, and I remember running into some Christians as a sinner and man, they were so abrasive in their approach to where there was no love. Right. I mean, they were sincere in what they were doing and trying to reach me, but they were sincerely wrong in how they went about it. The thing that caused me to receive God's love gift of Jesus Christ, the salvation that comes, it wasn't someone trying to scare the hell out of me. You know, make me so fearful of death that I would accept him. It, it, it was someone telling me, God loves you at a time when I wanted to kill myself. You know, the devil was just riding me like a monkey on my back, telling me, you know what, man, your life sucks so bad. You ought to just stick a gun in your mouth and just blow your head off. You just end your suffering right now. But I knew that hell was worse than what I was feeling. So it wasn't an option. But man, it was there, that thought. And I remember I went to church to get saved. And I remember when the altar call was given, I went straight to that altar. And I told God, I will give you the good, the bad, the ugly. I said, you want all of me? Then I will give you all of me. I said, but I need you to help me. Man, dog, God met me right there. Like you said, you know, like that thief on the cross just needing some belief. I didn't know no scriptures. I didn't know anything. He, Even, didn't go, uh, he didn't go to church. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, he didn't go to church. He wasn't baptized. He didn't do his first communion. It was like, I was like, Lord, you love me? I'm like, I don't even love me. And all I know is that instantly, man, my drug addictions were broken. Instantly, I went from being an alcoholic. I've been an alcoholic since I was a young teenager. Instantly set free. Instantly delivered. The weight of my sin removed. I didn't understand a lot, but what I didn't understand is this, is that, it, like you said, it was my belief in Jesus. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him because we don't give him nothing to work with. It's true. God works with his word. I believed in his word. I believed that he was the son of God. I believe that he did die on that cross for my sins. And I believe that, that he would hear me and he would help me if I would reach out to him. And, and man, I'm here today, you know, that was 1992, November the 6th. And here I am today, still a benefactor of that love. And I can say that after all these years, that I keep on f f discovering and enjoying more of his love. There's no limit to it. There's no limit. Well, you know, he never failed us. We failed him, but he's uh, never failed us. So true. You know, because, you know, you can make decisions as a man. You can make decisions as a pastor. You can make decisions as a minister, as a teacher. You know, truthfully, that is more self-motivated uh, than it is God-motivated. And you got to be careful of that because the thing of it is, is that we serve God. So before we make decisions, you know, I always tell everybody this. Before you do anything, man, you need to talk to God about it. Because the main thing is, is that you'll keep your heart right. Your motives are going to be headed in the right direction if you just do what God is telling you to do over every situation. How do I love that person? How do I accept that person? How do I accept this? How do I accept the hard word? Yeah. How do I get to the point? 
Amen. That That's the true. meat can be handled by me. Yeah. You know, because I've been living on milk, but what if somebody needs to jump on my case about the meat? Can I handle, handle it? it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe you've been watching this program today and, you know, and, and, and man, your heart's being tugged. And I'm telling you, you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that you shall be saved and you will experience this love. You just have to reach out and receive it. It's a gift. Just like you're going to be receiving gifts at Christmas. This is God's love gift to you as his son, Jesus Christ. Receive him as your Lord and Savior today. Amen. We love you and we thank you for being a part of this program. And we look forward to being with you again on another episode of Kingdom Concepts.